your receiving core, dog. I mean, from Sal Canella to Johnny Dixon to my goodness, <laughs> to what Jay Adams means, means to you, Tayshawn Taylor. <laughs> what does it mean for you to have that sort of talent on the edges for you catching passes? Yeah, well, I mean, it's everything because, you know, it's easy for it's easy for the media and everybody to when things are going right to put stuff on the quarterback and then when things are going right wrong to put stuff on the quarterback you know for me I'm so blessed and, and lucky they, they make my job easy mm. so like knowing that I don't have to go to one single guy mm. um in a pressure situation that like you know there's a lot of teams with one dude that like this guy this is the only guy that can get it done in this situation to have four or five different guys and then to not only have that, but a cohesive offensive line, um, running backs that, I mean, my, my running back, and this goes completely unseen just because it's not a part of football that, you know, gets the glory or gets the attention. But, you know, Jordan Ellis and Larry Rose, uh, I don't think it was, like I said, seen. But, you know, on the times that offensive linemen aren't going to always win their blocks, like it's, it's a one-on-one. -on -one. Like somebody, it's like, you know, it's 50-50 a lot of the time. So, when they don't win their blocks to see Jordan Ellis and Larry Rose stepping in and taking over their blocks so then the line the linemen can get back in phase it's it it makes my job so much easier to have guys that understand their responsibilities and then not only doing that but doing extra and doing more so you know i'm i'm a product of great talent around me i'm a product of uh, the cohesiveness of these guys really wanting to be great wanting to be good at their jobs, perfecting their craft. Um, I, I bring a little bit more experience than some of the young wide receivers that I have. But one thing that I, I love that they uh, do is that they're always willing to learn from the things that I've learned. The way I learned from the older guys when I was in the NFL, like the Kirk Cousins and the Matthew Staffords. And really, that's what it's all about. If we come with an open mind every single day, um, we just keep building that chemistry, that cohesiveness. Um, you know, the, the sky's the limit for this group. And uh, talent-wise, I feel like, you know, I, I wouldn't go to war with anybody else. So I'm, I'm blessed to have these guys. I'll follow that up with they didn't allow you to be sacked until week three of the season. And you got running backs yeah. that know when they should be chipping as opposed to going and hitting somebody they shouldn't be hitting as an offensive lineman. It's like, hey, I didn't expect you to be there. So the way in which exactly. they're communicating – is working really well too. I want to talk a little exactly. bit about your head coach and your offense coordinator, the relationship you have there, because yeah. one of the things I thought was most interesting about your team is Coach Fedora doesn't huddle, <laughs> right? Yeah, and yeah. Coach Mazone does huddle, and you got to find yeah. your way between two guys that I know have fiery personalities. I know a bit about Coach Fedora having covered college football for the better part of a decade now, but what has yeah. the relationship been like for you between the two of those guys, one coming from an NFL background and one coming from a Power 5 background? Yeah, so, you know, they are both – they're both great coaches. We'll start with that. So, Coach Fedora is a guy that, you know, he's exactly the type of person that I've always responded to in the way that he's going to be the first guy to get on you and he's going to coach you hard. He's going he's gonna to yell, he's going to dog cuss you, all that kind of stuff. But he's also in that same hand, he's going to be the first guy that loves on you when you do the right things. When you do things well, he's going to be the first guy to pat you on the back. So, you know, I, I think that his leadership style is something that everybody really responds to. Um, we respond well to the way that he uh, coaches us up. It's simple as that. He's not right now for us. Uh, the X's and O's guy because Coach Mazzoni is that. Um, but, you know, he's doing uh, he's doing the job that a good head man does. He's leading from the front. Um, you know, he doesn't ever let anyone slack off. He, he always gets the best out of us. So can't say enough good things about him. This is my first time working with him, but I played with his son, Dylan, um, at Southern Mississippi. We were both receivers there. And had the connection in that way, and um, just a coach. Coach is a great guy. I mean, a guy that you know now having dealt with him, I will probably continue to talk to him for a, a very long time. And he's a special guy in my life. Um, coach Mazzoni, great offensive mind, 
uh, has taught me a lot about the RPO game because I'm not really an RPO quarterback. That's not what I uh, – that's not a system that I ever really kind of grew into or played in. Um, but understanding that world um, and, uh, you know, trying to grow within that, that's got its own challenges and knowing how to because it makes everything – if you don't read things right in the RPO system, you're going to get hit. Like, and you're going to get, because you've got a free runner. That's who you're reading. So if you're, when the, the guy you're reading triggers on the run, which is typically him running at you, that's when you pull to throw the ball, you're going to get hit. So as an RPO quarterback, you got to be ready to eat some hits for some big returns, um, which is something that I, uh, I feel like I'm getting better at. But great offensive mind. He's a guy that listens. And that's something that, I appreciate from, you know, just a player standpoint is when you have a guy, the, the best coaches that I've been around acknowledge that there's great ideas in the room. Mm -hmm. So they don't always, it's not my way or the highway. It's, Hey, what are you guys comfortable with? And that's what he does with us is what are you comfortable with as a quarterback? What are you guys comfortable with as receivers? What are your best routes that you run? What do you feel like makes you an elite player? And let's do those things to, put us in a position to win, you know, because so many times it's not always about building around the quarterback. It's about building around everybody and everybody's strengths and weaknesses. So he's a, he's a great leader in that sense. And he understands that there are great ideas in the room. And sometimes the best leaders know how to follow. Thanks for watching this video. And remember hit that subscribe button. So you don't miss any other videos on the number one ranked show YouTube channel.